try to have this one good so <clears throat> Mormons and ex-Mormons duke it out arguing over whether the Book of Mormon is true or as a history or false as a fraud there are other options as I've discussed with you guys but we're going to focus on the failure of Mormons to establish truth of the Book of Mormon as history as we all know Mormons use diversionary deflective tactics to defend the Book of Mormon by you know claiming that the geography has been found that uh, archaeology has found European animals and coinage in America that the DNA actually comes from Jews <coughs> that Alma has been found to be a Hebrew male name and etc 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 but let's be clear no plates. Why do we need plates to establish the truth of the Book of Mormon? Because it's one thing for critics to say, oh, well, why is adieu a French word in the Book of Mormon? <laughs> you know, why are contemporary publications of the 1830 or early 1800s found contained in the Book of Mormon. <clears throat> and all of that is use useless arguing. Both sides, stop it. Cut it out. We have no plates. Why are plates essential for establishing the truth or falsehood of the Book of Mormon. Because the plates can be scientifically analyzed. If carbon dating of any kind can be done with them, linguistic researchers can now go in, check the text on the plates with the translation, to see if, sure enough, wow, these ancient Egyptians in America had made errors exactly like the 1769 King James Version of the English Bible. Amazing! Wow, Book of Mormon's true. And to be able to identify Egyptian, remember the small plates replacing the 116 pages of the book of Lehi are in Egyptian. They were just put in the full plates of the Book of Mormon according to the narrative. <clears throat> and according to what the Lord told Joseph Smith as to what's now going to happen now that Joseph Jr. blew it. One of the contemporary publication authors is Joseph Smith Sr., by the way, the Lord of the Manor of the Smith family. <coughs> and so you, you need to find Egyptian on the plates. It needs to be translated to correspond with Joseph's translation. And so, if Mormons want to defend the Book of Mormon, instead of saying, oh, well, archaeologists have found cows in America and other European animals, mammals and such, they're going to need to have the plates in their possession and show them, show critics, from the plates. Plate number three, third of the way down, that character right there, that's a cow. 
Ta-da! <laughs> That's how you defend the Book of Mormon. But no plagues. Book of Mormon cannot be defended. And so nobody can claim it's a history. We have to have the plates. It cannot be claimed as a history until we get plates. And so otherwise, we're not supposed to be as critics either, calling it a fraud. We have to look at it as a literary piece. And as a literary piece, we now say, oh, okay, well, Sidney Rigdon's the major author. Joseph Smith Sr. seems to be the one who replaced the 116 pages. And we're finding contemporary publications. And there's a, a pattern code within the text. It's got signs in the heavens that correspond with revelation signs in the heavens. And those give us specific dates. It's a messianic, apocalyptic fiction. That is the conclusion that is drawn from what we have. Now, if the church wants to claim that Moroni has returned the plates, not Nephi, by all means, show us the plates. Prove you're not lying to Mormons, lying to the world, that the Book of Mormon is historical. It's that simple. It's all that needs to be done. But Nelson can't translate, as he's demonstrated, so he'll have to hand it over to real linguistic scientists who know how to translate instead.